station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. Congressional Hispanic Caucus, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Chairwoman Berrigan at the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. How do you hear me? Congresswoman uh, Berrigan and to all the members, uh, welcome to the International Space Station. I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me? We hear you. Thank you. Are we ready to begin? Yeah, I am ready and excited to be talking to you guys. Thank you for this privilege and this honor. And, uh, and again, it's a, it's a pleasure to welcome you guys on behalf of NASA and Expedition 69 to the International Space Station. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Frank. On behalf of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, it's a great pleasure to see you and to speak with you today. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus welcomes you and everyone who is watching this live stream. We are honored to host today's historic conversation and we look forward to hearing from you. Joining us today are members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and congressional staff. I know we are on a tight schedule, so let's get going. As the first U.S. astronaut of Salvadorian heritage, you are a role model, not only for our young Salvadorians, but for all young Latinos to dream big and reach for the stars. How can the Congressional Hispanic Caucus work with you to leverage your unique role to educate and create opportunities to empower young Latinos to dream big and strive for success in their chosen paths and careers. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it's an incredible honor to represent our community, our people, uh, and just our, our nation up here uh, on the International Space Station. And, um, you know, I hope that my story serves as an example of not just the American dream, uh, but the American story, right? One of, uh, um, I was born to a young single mom, um, and yet through uh, hard work and dedication and sacrifice, incredible sacrifice uh, from my family, my loved ones, uh, we were able to take advantage of opportunities uh, and make the most of them. Uh, but yeah, what an exciting time to be part of the uh, space industry as we prepare for the Artemis mission and we prepare to have the first woman and the first person of color land on the moon. Uh, you know, as a father of four kids, three of whom are, are girls, I'm incredibly excited to see the first woman set foot on the moon. Uh, and I think, um, you know, as we endeavor to do big things as, as a nation and at NASA, uh, that kids of all races will be naturally inspired because I know I am, uh, even at this age, uh, when we do big things. And so I think continuing to push for those um, bigger and bigger boundaries uh, and watching, you know, the, the, the wonderful thing is that the astronaut core is really an incredibly diverse core. And uh, we bring so much talent, uh, so many different backgrounds. And so naturally, all of those things will come together to make for uh, incredible teams that will do big things and hopefully inspire the next generation. Frank, this is Darren Soto from the Sunshine State. We're so proud of the work you're doing. I'm also the husband of an educator locally in Central Florida, and we posted my constituent, Administrator Nelson, at our local schools. So my question is, how can we improve the Hispanic talent pipeline to work for NASA as well as SpaceX, ULA, Blue Origin, and other space companies? Hey, Congressman Soto, it's an honor to, uh, to greet you from up here. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, in the beautiful state of Florida, just like California, uh, Texas, Oregon, um, so many rich uh, Latino communities there. And I think uh, all of those companies uh, that you just mentioned, and of course NASA and our federal government, we all really appreciate the value that diversity brings. And I think those companies um, already know uh, the benefits that, that a diverse workforce can bring not just because of the diversity itself, but different ways of thinking, different ideas, uh, different team approaches, and all those inevitably just lead to better team efforts. And so I think engaging with those companies and asking them to, uh, to you know, come beside us and engage those communities, uh, I think they would be more than willing to do that because uh, in the long run, it's gonna provide them for a much more talented uh, workforce. Um, and I'm, I'm just willing to bet that they would be uh, willing to do that. 
Uh, another thing, you know, especially in, in um, communities where that are in close proximity to um, to space industry, uh, like Florida, like California, uh, the Pacific Northwest, um, I think it would be an awesome thing to develop mentorship programs where young uh, Latinos and again people of all backgrounds can team up with people who have already had that success and have um, achieved great things and say, hey, what did you do? And how can I learn from you? And uh, can you help teach me and guide me as I, uh, you know, as I go down my uh, career path? Because the reality is uh, it's usually not just an individual effort, not just a family effort, but it really does take an entire community, an entire tribe uh, to bring up the next generation. Saludos, Frank. Yo me llamo Yadira Carabeo y soy la congresista del estado de Colorado, del octavo distrito. Es un verdadero placer hablar con un latino que está en, en, una, en las ciencias, pero en, en particular hablar con él en español. Entonces, en la comunidad latina hay poco conocimiento y opciones limitadas en ciencia, tecnología, ingeniería y matemáticas. ¿Qué iniciativas o estrategias cree usted que puedan ayudar a que más jóvenes latinos comiencen una carrera en exploración espacial? Bueno, muchísimas gracias y uh, buenos días, congresista uh, Carabeo. Qué, qué gran gusto saludarla. Uh, y claro, eh, siempre es un gusto hablar en español desde la Estación Espacial Internacional. Uh, y es cierto, no, no solo en uh, el sistema de... de del espacio, pero la medicina, claro, uh, los dos son, somos uh, doctores y sabemos que uh, siempre se necesitan más uh, hispanos, latinos en nuestra profesión porque hay tanta necesidad. Entonces, eh, parte es de, de enseñar la necesidad a la juventud y, y enseñarles cómo ellos pueden ayudar y uh, también servir como ejemplos. Gracias a Dios que en nuestro país tenemos muchos latinos que han tenido éxito. Y yo creo que es muy importante que los latinos que hemos tenido ese éxito, eh, que nos juntemos con la juventud, que, que todavía no han tenido esa oportunidad, y enseñarles, eh, no solo en nuestras carreras, pero directamente hablando con ellos eh, y enseñándoles los pasos que nosotros tomamos para llegar a donde estamos. Astronaut Rubio, uh, my name is Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Felicidades, saludos. Tenemos tanto orgullo por usted. We're just so incredibly proud of all the work that you're doing. I mean, I can, I think I can speak for the caucus that as soon as we saw you come on screen, all of our faces just lit up uh, with so much joy and celebration at your presence there. Um, your story about you know, coming from a household, being raised by a single mom, it speaks to so much of our backgrounds as working class people. And um, I'm curious, with so many people back home, our districts, our communities, working multiple jobs as servers and waitresses, construction, uh, how do we communicate? How do you go about communicating to working people, especially in the Latino community, the importance of space exploration and scientific research, particularly that done in space, while connecting that work to the daily lives of just everyday people back home and our constituents, selfishly from New York City, but also across the country as well? Well, Congresswoman, it's an honor to uh, say hello to you. And yeah, you know, our prayers are with the uh, communities in New York and the Northeast currently with uh, all the storms that they've uh, experienced. Um, and yeah, absolutely, you are you're, um, spot on as far as, you know, for so much of our uh, community, the reality is that they're too busy working and living day to day um, because they, they require the next paycheck. Um, to really think uh, big picture of, hey, how can I set my kids up for success in high school and then college and then early on in their careers? And that's a very difficult challenge. Um, but um, again, I think as a nation, uh, we need to be up for that challenge. And again, not just for the Latino community, for all of our uh, communities out there that are struggling with those day-to-day -day, um, life struggles, right? And um, you know, the beauty is that through social media, uh, we're also interconnected nowadays uh, that that despite the busyness, uh, I think we do have that outreach to those communities. And um, the, the beauty is that despite the struggles, I think sometimes uh, the communities that 
experienced that struggle are also the most willing to sacrifice because they know that through that sacrifice, uh, through the hard work, uh, they can endeavor to big things for the next generation, right? And I think we all, uh, more than anything, want to set up our kids, our grandkids, uh, to have a better life than we did. And so using that, um, that dream that we all have of the, of the U.S., that it represents, hey, an opportunity that if I work hard and I give it what it takes, I can make something of myself and I can uh, help uh, the next generation do even better. Uh, and so I think that dream is alive and well. Uh, I think all of us have a duty to, to reach out to the younger communities, uh, younger generation in all of our communities, uh, to, to help make that happen. And of course, um, you know, it's not an easy answer. I wish I did have the, uh, the answer, but unfortunately, uh, even being in space hasn't given me uh, the insight to fix all of our problems. But I do know for a fact that um, it's through teamwork uh, and dedication and making sacrifice as a nation that we can definitely achieve the solutions to those problems, no matter how tough those problems are. Thank you so much, Frank. Hello, this is Congresswoman Andrea Salinas from Oregon, uh, 6th District. And um, yeah, it is, as my colleague said, we are, my heart is bursting right now. I'm so excited and proud um, to have representation in space. So how has your experience as a fellow first generation Hispanic American influenced the kinds of questions and perspective that you bring to your research abroad, aboard the International Space Station? And how can diverse voices drive innovation in space exploration that leads to benefits for all people? Uh, Congressman, Congresswoman Salinas, uh, thank you so much for that question. It's an honor to uh, greet you from up here. And, uh, you know, I hope that um, my example, just like the rest of my crew members, ultimately uh, we come from such a diverse background. Um, you know, personally, I think my, my mom would uh, absolutely uh, want me to say my work ethic, right? Because she, she raised me to say, hey, no matter what the struggles are, no matter what the hurdles are, uh, you can overcome them through hard work, uh, sacrifice and dedication and so um, but I think I'd be remiss to say that that's unique to me the reality is I'm surrounded by some amazing uh, crew crewmates who've all achieved great things and um, and not just up here but really on the ground we have an amazing ground team that supports us day in and day out to make this mission possible and so I think uh, that team working together the NASA team uh, makes our nation incredibly proud uh, and even, um, you know, right now uh, on station, we have a, an incredibly diverse and international crew. We have an astronaut from uh, the UAE. Uh, we have three cosmonauts uh, that we're working with. And despite the uh, international challenges that we face, uh, we've figured out a way to come together as a crew um, and make this mission happen because the reality is we all appreciate the value of the fact that the mission comes first. And in order to uh, make this successful, we all have to work uh, together, no matter what the big picture differences uh, might be. And so hopefully, um, you know, not just younger generations, but all generations can look at this example of how uh, teams from different backgrounds, uh, different beliefs can come together and say, hey, we need to make this mission happen. We're going to work together and we're not just going to uh, make it happen. We're, we're going to actually make it incredibly successful and we're all going to enjoy doing it. And I think we've done that. And uh, hopefully this serves as a small example uh, to the rest of our nation. Perfect. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm Congressman Maxwell Alejandro Frost. I represent Orlando, Florida. Just wanted to say hi and just thank you so much for being uh, a great role model, especially to people of color, young people, Latinos around STEM. Um, you know, I spent 10 years in the Civil Air Patrol where I flew gliders. So not exactly being an astronaut uh, or going to space. Uh, but I have a, a deep admiration for aerospace and um, just thank you for everything. Well, thank you, hey, Congressman Frank, uh, Frost. Um, again, it's an honor to, to greet you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, Frank, it's Bill Nelson. And I just want to say uh, thank you for being the ambassador that you are for us. You're showing uh, how you can get along with the Russian cosmonauts while we have so much difficulty on the face of the earth. Uh, you all uh, bring it together and our space program unifies. And, and thank you also, you intended to be there for six months and there was a gas leak on the Russian Soyuz and uh, you couldn't use it. 
And the effect is that you've got to be there for 12 months uh, away from your family. So thank you for that sacrifice. I'm gonna hand it back to the chair. Well, Senator Nelson, uh, thank you so much. And again, uh, it's an honor to represent NASA up here. Uh, what an incredible team we have, what an incredible team you lead. And it's really uh, been a privilege. It's absolutely been a challenge for, uh, for me on a personal level with my family. Uh, but honestly, uh, being a part of this team, having this opportunity, uh, and ultimately helping to make this mission happen of continuous U.S. presence in space for 20 plus years, uh, what an honor and what a privilege. So um, it's been a great joy. Hey, tell him to do a flip before uh, the... Well, before you leave us, we want we want you to do a flip, but we have one, one final spontaneous question that a Congresswoman Linda Sanchez from Southern California has, and that is, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> well, ma'am, we couldn't finish without that or question. Or UFOs. Uh, you know what? Um, UFOs. <laughs> well, I do think, you know, our universe is so vast, uh, surely there's got to be something else out there. I don't know that we've quite um, seen that yet, uh, but hey, the further we push out into space, uh, the more we push our boundaries, I think the more that we're going to learn, and uh, who knows. Uh, but um, unfortunately, I have not seen any UFOs from up here, but I'll definitely keep an eye out. <laughs> people in this caucus who represent Wallace. <laughs> oh my God, thank you, Mario. Well, well, Frank. Well, thank uh, you all once again. Rubio. It's been an... Uh, uh, Frank, astronaut Rubio, thank you so very much for joining us from space, it was such a pleasure. We are all lighting up over here. It was great to see you do the flip, so thank you for doing that. We wish you a safe trip back home to you and to your loved ones. Thank you again for all you've done and for being such a powerful role model for the Latino community and children everywhere. With that, we sign off. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am, again, and thank you all for what you do for our nation. It's been an honor, and you all take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from the United States Congress. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication.